Karen Baker and I'm here today to show you the new stamp release from Tonic Studios called Wonderful Wishes which is all based around Christmas and you can see if I zoom in a little bit on this set which is called Jolly Marshmallow Snowman you can see you've got a little marshmallow snowman that can be next to or on top of the cup and you've got various sweets and bits and bobs to put on top but you don't have to use it just for Christmas the cup and the different sweets that you can use, you can make cards the whole year round. The projects I'm gonna show you today are these ones. So I'm gonna show you how to stamp on fabric to make a nice easy gift bag. And also how to create these two fun little tags which are super cute and would make a perfect tag or you can put them on your cards and make lovely Christmas greeting cards too. So let's get started. So the first thing we're going to talk about is how to stamp on fabric. It is really very easy. Now after I stamped this I thought oh goodness that's really boring. I should have used um, coloured inks. So I've got some of my Nouveau hybrid inks. You can see the colours here. I've got Lime Burst, Panama Rose and Polar Ice. Now because cotton is um, all fabric, whatever you're going to use poly cotton will work as well linen will work although it'll be more of um, a subtle effect because it's more of a loose and open weave um, so I've got my bit of fabric um, and if you've got a stamp positioner um, it's really really useful tool because of the nature of fabric you may need to stamp it a couple of times so having something where you can be so precise and have it exactly where you want is really handy so I've got my fabric inside now this was just an off cut from something i picked up in a charity shop you don't even have to go out and get something um, new or expensive just a little off cut of cotton you could use an old t-shirt and don't forget that fabric you know whilst if you're not a sewer and you don't want to make it into a bag you can use it for cards um because if you've got um, a die cut like the um, circles or squares, an open simple shape, that will actually cut your fabric as well. So let's just have a little go so you can see what we're doing. So what I'm gonna do is pick one of the stamps, I'll pick this one, and then decide where you're gonna put it. Um, obviously you need your stamp to be clean, I'll just lay them down um, and I'll put a couple of them on Ideally, you'd start with your big images first and then fit in the other ones, but I'm just going to stamp a couple of them. So I'll put a couple together. Make sure you've got it on clear. This is the Tonic Tim Holtz um, one, and this is my favourite. Now, it might pull up the fabric because um, it will stick slightly, the photopolymer will stick, but don't worry about that. Just straighten it back down again. Once it's got the ink on, it's not going to stick in the same way. So I'm just going to, you know, I'll show what I'm doing. I'm just gentle tapping all over and we'll do blue for that one. And then if you've never used one before, you just put it on a solid surface and just press down, carefully lift up. And you can see the pink's done quite well, but the blue definitely needs a little more. I'm gonna ink both of them up. And obviously you can ink as many times or as few times as you want. So pop that back on. You see it's starting to create a much better impression. So that's how you would do the fabric. It's a really great effect, particularly if you enjoy sewing. So that's the fabric that we're gonna talk about. Now on to the tag. So to make the tag, uh, we're just going to go through some of the um, basic parts of it rather than show you from beginning to end because I want this to be a short video. So I've already stamped my little marshmallow guy. He's really cute and there are different faces that you can put in sides so you can see these different faces that you can use. So I've stamped him, so all I need to do is use the little face. Now I'm using the Nouveau Hybrid, this is the Black Shadow. So this is suitable for water colouring and it's also suitable for use with alcohol markers or just general stamping. So I'm just going to pop his little face on. Okay, so he's ready to go. Now to colour him in, I'm using some of the Nouveau alcohol markers. And I've picked four colours. I tend to use three or four to give me a bit of shade. And I've got three browns in different colours. You can see that's the lightest 
through to the dark it's 479 466 and 465 and I've also got a grey which is 491 for contrast so I'm just going to show you really quickly um, how I would colour them in so you're all about trying to get depth and dimension so I'm not going to do all of it but I'm just going to show you briefly so I'm going to colour the lightest colour if you're blending the best thing to do is work on smaller areas because the best blend you will get is when the ink is still slightly wet. So I'm putting, leaving a little line in the middle because that's showing the height. Let me just get the next one. Okay, which one's which? So if you work more quickly, so I'm going to put the darker colour in like that and I'm going to take the lighter colour and where the dark and light colour meet, just pop a very, very thin line. So it becomes much more of um, a graduated line and less of an obvious gap between the two. So again, just go back in, just stroke the edges where the dark and light meet. And you can see already the contrast between this leg and that leg is quite good. And then we'll just get our darker colour still and just stroke that along the edge. So that's how I've done his legs. If you have a look at the tag, you can see that I've coloured in the middles. Let's see, show sure properly. So I've coloured in the middles of the darker colour to show that that's a, um, a cut into the leg. Um, and again, you can see the edges. What I tend to do when I'm using white is not leave it completely white. I'll either use a light blue or a light gray. And that just gives the dimension that he is 3D and he's slightly rounded. And you can see I've just used a little marker and I've used lots of little dots, which just adds more texture to the little snowman. So we'll talk about doing the middle and the edge of the coffee or teacup or chocolate, whatever you're going to make with it. Again, I'm using similar colors. I want it all to tone really well. The cardstock that I'm using is the Tonic Studios um, Craft Perfect Ultra Smooth, which works pretty good, pretty good, works really well with the alcohol markers. So all I'm gonna do is color in. So again, Got a slightly um, larger area. So I'm going to be colouring in using my lighter. Sometimes I go darker to lighter, it just depends on whatever the mood takes me. So I'm putting a couple of layers down, and again, I'm going in with my slightly darker. And just, I don't want to have a regular shape line, I just want it to have more of a natural look to it. So again, I'm putting that colour over and then going back in with the lighter colour that I've just used and using circular strokes. And as I colour over the edge, you can see, because that's how the alcohol markers work, they blend beautifully. So the more I do, I would go over the whole coffee cup, just following that type of motion. And then when I've done that, I will go back with the dark colour still and pop that. If you're using a much darker colour, I tend to use the colour that is actually next to it as the blend. So I go back with the darker brown that I used before and that will help blend it out. And again, if some of that's gone over onto the lighter part, I would just get my lighter one and blend. So it's just a process of laying down colours and blending and then I'm to go in, I'd actually add a slightly darker one just to make sure that I've got it as dimensionally as possible. So that's what I'm going to do, going over the whole of the cup until we end up with something that looks like this. Now obviously that will dry slightly different and I think I've actually used slightly different colours for this one. But you can see the type of effect that we've got. Now we'll look at doing the little cup part here which I've actually stamped and heat embossed on. So let me show you what I've done. Just put the tops on the markers so I don't get them all over my hands. Right, so moving those. What I've done is I've stamped onto a sticky note make sure that wherever you do your stamping you have a good proportion of the image up near where the adhesive is and then all i've done you can see better there 
I've just cut out the little section in the middle which means that when I stamp, even if I go over the edges, it's not going to go over the edges of the cup. So that's a little clever trick. So all I do now is position it, and you can see from where you've stamped before exactly where to go. So I'm gonna pop that on like that. Now I know that when I'm stamping, I can stamp in that area and I haven't got to worry about anything else. So let's pick another one. Uh, let's have a little look. I think I'll go with some hearts this time. So again, get your um, acrylic block. And because I'm doing um, heat embossing, I do need an embossing pad. So I'm using my Nouveau Clear Mark pad. So let's just ink up the heart. We haven't got much of... Um, much space to put it on. So I'm gonna make sure that I just put it on at a slight angle. So again, popping it on, I'll just do three. Just adds texture and interest onto your card. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sprinkle this, which is Glacier White embossing powder, and then we're gonna to heat to set and I'll show you what it looks like in a minute. Right, so I've heat embossed and actually just finished colouring in as well, so it looks a little bit more finished. So all I need to do now is add a little bit of colour, and I'm now using my Aqua Flows. So I've got here Aqua Splash and Azure Blue, and I'm also going to need my water brush, and I've got my medium water brush here. So all I need to do is just scribble, it would help if I'd cleaned off my acrylic block just scribble a little bit of the color that's all we're doing and we're going to water it down slightly and we're just going to do some really scribbly water color so just add a little bit of water and then we're just going to take it on and obviously where we have done the um, heat embossing that's going to act as a resist so just color that all in nice and quickly see I'm not being super careful don't worry about getting um, splodges of color you're going to want to have a difference in um, color around so it looks more natural and all we would do is we would build up the color I would actually use a darker color in the edges here like that because in the edges of the mug or the cup it's actually going to be darker. That's just the way the, the light falls. So we would do that, and then by all means, if you wanna add some color to the inside, you can do that too. So obviously I'm doing it super quick. You would be way more careful. So that's how we're going to do the basic part of our cup. And then looking at how to do the the effect that we've got, which I think we'll be able to show you, we'll be able to see. But if you have a little look, see if I can bring it up. You can see you've got like froth or foam actually on there. And that's really easy to do. All you need for that is the Nouveau Clear Mark pen. Now, all that's in there is this. So the ink that they've used to make the embossing pad is in the pen, but the beauty of this is you couldn't do this type of effect just using the ink pad. I guess maybe if you got a paintbrush and sort of dabbed a dry paintbrush and picked up a little bit of the ink, you probably could. But all I'm gonna do, and I'll lift it up so you can see, it's just like a pen, like a felt tip. Now it's gonna go on clear, and if I angle it slightly, I can see where I'm actually putting it. And all I need to do, it's just scribble away, trying to get the effect of some foam. So I'm just gonna pop that. And you can go back, if you, if you want a stronger look and um, you feel you haven't quite got enough ink on, you can always go back afterwards. I know you can't see that, but when I pop some embossing powder on, it will stick to the areas which I've scribbled with the pen. So if I put it on like that, there, can you see? So I'm just gonna heat set that now and it just gives you an idea of the effect that you can create using it. So I've heat set that and added a little bit more color and 
hopefully you can just about see the texture so I mean you could do latte art with it I mean that you could have real fun and go to town with it I finished colouring my snowman so I can show you all I would do now is just using a little marker I would just be putting lots of little dots so I'd finish that and that just helps it look a little bit more 3D um, obviously be a little bit more careful so I would finish that so all I need to do now is to cut it out and complete it now for the saucer I've just used um, a die cut circle using one of the tonic circle sets there you go um, and you can choose whatever colour I've obviously chosen a colour that is going to match with the colour that I have um, used on the cup itself and all you need to do now is stamp the sentiment now I could do it um, straight on with my black ink um, I'm going to actually heat emboss it because it's a slightly darker colour if I show you the image the stamp itself hopefully you can see because these are photopolymer which is a quality type of product which is specifically designed for holding ink um, they're actually quite bendy so in, this is how the sentiment comes straight but if I put it stick it down a little edge and then just gently bend it round what I end up with is a sentiment that is going to match the edge of what I want to stamp it on so when I put it on like that it's probably a little bit too much of a curb so if I just there you go, I'll make it a little less curved so now when I stamp it on I'm gonna have it matching the edge of whatever shape I'm using so that's another handy little tip you can actually make them into slightly different shapes than they've actually been designed for so pop that on press it down and then I'm going to add more embossing powder on the top and then we'll heat to set it. There we go, so I'll heat to set it now. So that's it, heat embossed. So all I need to do now is just build up the tags. So I've cut out the little cup. So we're just going to pop that on. So it looks like it's a cup and saucer and then pop the little snowman on like that and then we're just going to thread through a little bit of twine and then you've got a tag obviously these are going to be perfect on cards as well but they're going to make super cute little tags um, i hope you've enjoyed having a little look at this winter um, wishes release and this particular set is called the Jolly Marshmallow Snowman. So we can't wait to see what you guys actually create using the sets. Don't forget to tag Tonic on uh, Instagram or uh, Facebook. Do join the Facebook group, uh, Tonic Studios one, um, and share. We love to see what you create and get up to as it inspires us to. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye.